All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning. My name is Steve Cadu. I am the, uh, well, I have the privilege of serving as principal in this building, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the new and improved Lincoln Developmental Center. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, and it's a, it's, a, it's a great day. We have a number of special guests and some amazing people here to help us celebrate. Um, let me introduce some of, our, some of our guests today. We have Ms. Teresa Weatherall, Weatherall Neal, Superintendent of Grand Rapids Public Schools, right up front. <laughs> right next to her is um, the board president from Kent Intermediate School District. Um, I, I wrote it down. Ms. Heidelman, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Heidelman. We have Ron Kniff, KISD superintendent. We have Mike Haggerty, who is the assistant superintendent of administrative services for KISD. We have um, Dr. Ron Flores, GRPS, Grand Rapids Public Schools board member. Someplace out there, we have um, Tim Perino. Tim Prino is Director of Facilities for Kent Intermediate School District. We have Mr. John Helmholt, our GRPS Communications Director. We have Mr. Ken Klamperens, Grand Rapids Public Schools Director of Facilities. We have, in addition, Paul Domowski, he is the newly named director of center-based programming for Kent Intermediate School District. Yikes. Did I get them all? I can see why Laura told me I needed to be on my best behavior. I mean, we got all the bosses here, <laughs> every single one. Um, now let me take a minute and talk about some amazing, some amazing people. If you would, our guests, take a look around. Look at all these beautiful boys and girls, young adults. And the, and the hard work and dedicated staff that uh, interact with them each day. All this renovation, um, the renovation of this building, all this is for them. Everything that was renovated here last summer was done intentionally and purposefully um, for a very specific reason, whether to foster independence, to provide increased opportunities for learning, um, protecting staff and student from, from injuries, maybe garden student dignity, uh, providing, a, providing a safe and secure environment. All of this has a positive impact on what occurs here each day and consequently what, it, what occurs in the lives of our students, students and having a positive impact on what goes on in their families as well. And that's what we're all about and what those renovations are all about, making them very super important. Um, Ms. Weatherall Neal and Mr. Kniff, you guys need to know the organizations that you had up um, just did a wonderful job of ensuring this project was completed in a timely manner and in a manner that had minimal impact on those students, okay? Uh, Ron, your administrative and facility staff treated us very well when we were at the KEC Beltline building this summer. Um, your facility staff also not only participated in the planning and preparation, the construction phases, but daily are here um, trying to ensure that everything is complete and done in a, um, you know, an acceptable manner, and we really appreciate that. Teresa, our facility staff got us here at the beginning of the summer, or got us out of here at the beginning of the summer, got us back at the end of the summer. Um, they had to operate under some very tough circumstances and very tight timelines. Um, our people from MIS, food service, um, the service building, all really need to be commended. Very proud, very proud of them. And without Laura Lamar, Laura is our director of special education. She couldn't be here today, she's ill. But without her unwavering support, this would be real difficult as well. So I appreciate that. Now I would be remiss if I did not mention the efforts put forth by um, our classroom staff and our related services staff here at LDC. Um, this entire building needed to be packed up at the beginning of the summer, moved, and then moved back and unpacked 10 weeks later. Um, 
whatever the inconvenience, whatever the roadblock, whatever the obstacle that occurred, and there are a couple, the staff met that challenge and they did it well without ever letting it affect how they interacted with those students at all. So to that, I'm very, very, very proud of them. Um, and I feel privileged to be the, the, the leader of this building based on that and based on our students and uh, all the support that this program gets from all of you. So thank you. So on behalf of us, LDC students, staff, and our families, I'd just like to thank all this leadership here um, of Grand Rapids and KISD for making all this possible. All right? Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to welcome the staff and the students here to our wonderful program here at Lincoln Developmental Center. I just want to take time, you guys, to thank the voters in this community. If it wasn't for the voters, we wouldn't have this. It takes resources to pull this type of program off and to have the renovations. And so for all of our voters who supported us, we say thank you. Not only on behalf of the Grand Rapids Public Schools, but the entire ISD. It's all of us working together that made this possible. I want to thank your principal. Can you hear me? Should I go? You want me to move this out the way, John? Okay. You guys, thank you, not only for the voters, but for the staff. You guys not only packed up, moved out, and moved back in but your love, your passion for the work, thank you for that. We knew that this building had to be updated and it was by working with Ron Kniff, the staff at the ISD, as well as Grand Rapids Public Schools and the board, both boards working together to make this happen. So on behalf of the Grand Rapids Board of Education, the staff at Grand Rapids Public Schools, I wanna say thank you to everyone that made this project possible, but especially to our voters, to our community members who believed in the work that we were doing. I'm going to turn this over to Ron Kniff, our superintendent of the KISD. Thank you, Superintendent Weatherall Neal. Really appreciate that. You are a terrific partner. Uh, this is just one example of many, many examples of how our two organizations cooperate and collaborate with each other. And I can't thank uh, Superintendent Neal enough for being very gracious, her commitment to children, uh, especially some of our community's most vulnerable children. So again, thank you, Teresa, uh, for all that you have done to make this happen. Uh, I'd like to thank your Grand Rapids Public Schools team. Uh, and when I talk about the team, I'm talking about everyone, your custodial facilities, maintenance staff, Ken Klom parents, uh, just thank you for going the extra mile. Your teachers and your staff in here. Uh, I know we had some anxious moments in August. I mean, right up to the wire, I think, and maybe even beyond the wire, whether or not we were able to open the doors by the time uh, the school year started. But you made it happen. So thank you. Thank you so much for your flexibility, for your patience, for your tolerance, uh, for going the extra mile, the moving of boxes uh, to and from, and uh, can't, can't thank you enough for that. I know you missed a professional development opportunity in order to uh, take care of some of the logistics of the move, but uh, and came in over the weekends to get your rooms ready or in the evenings to get your rooms ready, and, and we appreciate that greatly. Uh, Several of our guests were already acknowledged, but I want to go uh, just a step further uh, and, and thank a few other individuals. Again, Andrea Heidel from our uh, Board of Education, Kent ISD, thank you for your support and the support of the Kent ISD Board for uh, this project and, and moving it forward. Uh, we do have uh, a superintendent, in the, at least one other superintendent uh, in the midst. I want to acknowledge him, Jerry Hopkins from Kennewa Hills. Jerry, can you stand and take a bow? Thank you, Jerry. And we have several special education directors uh, from our local districts who are here. If you are a special ed director or you are the liaison uh, to this program and to this facility, could you please stand and we want to acknowledge you and thank you for your presence here today. 
And again, uh, Dr. Flores, thank you and the Grand Rapids Public Schools Board of Education as well for your support in making this project happen. Two other special guests I want to give a shout out to. Owen Ames Kimball was the construction manager and King Scott was the architectural firm. I believe they have a representative here. If you're in the room, King Scott or OAK, can you wave so we can say thank you, appreciate that. You earned your paycheck on this one, I'll tell you what, in terms of uh, uh, some of the challenges. And as, uh, Doc, uh, or as Superintendent Neal said, I uh, want to thank the taxpayers as well. Not everyone understands the nuances of how these programs and these projects are funded, uh, but this, uh, this special education millage that is levied on a countywide basis or an ISD uh, basis pays for this. We set aside one-tenth of one mil every year uh, for facilities and infrastructure projects, and that saves the taxpayers money because it means that we don't have to go out and bond for those projects so we're saving on interest costs for the adults in the room so as uh, Teresa said thank you voters thank you taxpayers for your supporting all children in uh, Kent Intermediate School District and with our community we greatly greatly appreciate it I'm going to turn the floor over now or the podium over to Mike Haggerty Mike will get into some of the details of this project thank you Again, welcome and, and good morning. Uh, my name's Mike Haggerty. I serve as the Assistant Superintendent of Administrative Services. Is this on? Uh, Mike Haggerty, I serve as the Administrate, uh, Superintendent of Administrative Services. One of those roles is facilities. And uh, I would really like to thank Superintendent Kniff and Superintendent Neal. It does take a lot of collaboration. This county collaborates and gets things done together, and I think these organizations are working together now as good as any time in the future, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, this collaborative, this facility discussion actually started a few years ago when we completed uh, Pine Grove. It's hard to believe, but it's been 11 years now since we built Pine Grove, and it was three years since we added on. And there were some discussions between Grand Rapids team and our team that said, do we need to bring the LDC and Lincoln standards up to that of Pine Grove? And uh, that was really the impetus to get this started, and uh, I think we've gotten there. While we see the fruits of our labor today, this work actually started in June of 2017. As we often do in this county, we put together a great committee of collaborative people to come together. And I'd like to thank those people because they put in a lot of time and effort. Uh, I don't think, we had two parent reps. I don't think Sarah Kugler uh, or Laura Kitts are here, if you are, but uh, great input from our parents on this facility renovation. Uh, to Steve Kadu and Lisa Merritt, two principals in this program. We had a great team from Grand Rapids. Laura Lamore was lunch, mentioned, Larry Obris, Ken, uh, we're all part of that. Ken ISD, Lori Vanderplug, Tim Perino, Ryan Vandermolen, and then as Superintendent Kniff mentioned, we brought together some great partners to make this happen, and King Scott and OAK were those two great partners to make it happen. So that committee where I, I read off those names, um, it doesn't underscore the amount of time and effort we looked at colors, carpet, flooring, technology. We spent a lot of time together to make this happen. So to everyone on that committee, I say thank you, especially to the parents who volunteer their time to give input, I say thank you. This board probably says it better than I, and I know we have a parent and a teacher speaking, but we did a lot of great work to this building. I think it has a better feel uh, when you walk in and you're just in it, but the main work that we tried to do was to the classroom. That interaction between teacher and student, the lighting was important, the flooring was important. Probably one of the great things was the toilet rooms. We revamped all of those to make it safer and more efficient. There's always a lot of storage needs in a building like this from wheelchairs and other student needs. We put in some nooks and did some things on the storage side. Classroom technology was important. Um, the overhead projectors, PA system, telephones. When you walked in the building, you saw a new entrance, right? It's now a secure entrance. 
with a, a drive around, uh, brought it up to the standard that we thought it should be. Uh, and then just some things. We turned the pool room into a sensory area that was important. Uh, the HVAC, the, the heating, the control, we did some work there. So we tried to touch all parts of it that we could. And if you think about this, we, we spent 10 weeks in this building and we spent $4.32 million. So it was a lot of work in a short period of time. Uh, and it was already mentioned, I think we have a great model of funding in this county that we set money aside to be able to do that. So I'd once again like to thank all the people on the committee that did that work for the renovations that hopefully set us in a spot for the next how many years to come uh, and really is a great thing for both teachers and students. So thank you to everyone that put the hours in to make this happen and to our partners. I'll, I'll turn it over to Kim Chase. Hello. My son Carson has been here at LDC for seven years, and I think I can speak for all the parents and students when I say thank you to Kent ISD and GRPS for the time, effort, and funds that went into the renovations of our school. Also, a special thank you to Steve, Rayanne, the teachers, parapros, nurses, therapists, and all other support staff for their incredible work through all of this. They literally gutted this building, set up shop in an off-site facility, and then moved back again, all within just a couple months. Oh, and I should mention, they amazingly managed to run a summer schedule that from the outside appeared to be business as usual. So thank you guys. We know that wasn't an easy thing to do, but we thank you for keeping normalcy of routine and your commitment and care of our kids your focus. As parents of these students, we take pride in what goes on within the walls of this school. We believe our children perform best and deserve an environment that is safe, welcoming, and conducive to meeting their unique needs. The improvements made over the last several months have hopefully enhanced the school experience for them. Having one entryway through the gates of Rayan, as I like to say, and the office definitely is a comfort, <clears throat> excuse me, and makes our kids more secure. The openness of the hallways without additional obstacles of wheelchairs and equipment is a huge help <clears throat> in safety measure for our children. The new sensory room, technology upgrades, and all the other updates and improvements are welcome changes for them too. We are thrilled for the students and staff to have these upgrades and improvements made. For the past seven years that we have been part of the LDC family, I have witnessed what a special place this is. I am truly grateful that our children and the staff guiding them have been able to receive these much needed renovations. Thank you again. And now I'll pass it off to Kelly, Carson's teacher. Carson. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Kelly Silvernail and I want to thank all of you for coming to LDC today. On our first day back for professional development this year, we spent the morning at Lincoln School and were given our first opportunity to walk over and see the progress in our newly renovated building. What struck me most was even though there was still much to be done at that time, our building had come a long way in the nine short weeks since we had been there last. From our perspective, so much was different. Our classrooms had fresh new tile, carpet, and a beautiful new color scheme. New whiteboards and projectors had been installed to aid in student instruction. Our whole office suite had been moved to a new part of the building and a new entrance created. There were decisions that had been made with a clear student-centered purpose in mind. Carpet had been removed from our hallway and replaced with tile to allow for easier student mobility. New security measures were put into place to ensure the safety of all of our students and staff. Even the tiles in the hallway were carefully laid and in colored, in colored patterns to make measuring walking distance easier. 
While we are still getting used to our newly reconfigured and redesigned space, we continue to learn about and discover new improvements all the time. We are grateful for the support of Kent ISD and GRPS and all those involved in updating our school, and we recognize and are thankful for their continued promise and commitment to our students in making their space of learning safe and fully functional and meeting their unique needs. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and supporting us today. That concludes the, uh, the dedication, the renovation ceremony. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay.